Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com and I am here today with lesson number 27 in our new improved series of Arduino tutorials. What we're going to learn about today is we are going to learn how to incorporate a push button into a project and the closely associated concepts of pull up and pull down resistors. And so I will need you to pour yourself a nice tall mug of iced coffee. That's just strong black coffee over ice, no sugar needed. And it is most refreshing. And then I need you to get your eLEGO Super Starter Kit out. What? You don't have one? Look in the description, click the link. 35 bucks you can get this kit. It's got the Arduino and a boatload of components and all the projects that I am doing in this series are based on that kit and if you want to play along at home it is a little easier if we are using exactly the same hardware. Okay so let's get right into this and I will move out of your way and we will come over here to a little bit clearer view and this is what you will need for this project. You are going to need to get out your eLEGO uh, Arduino, you're going to need to get out your breadboard. You will need a red LED, a 330 ohm current limiting resistor. You will need to get out your tiny switch from the kit. <coughs> Excuse me. And then a 10K resistor. This will be our pull up resistor or it will be our pull down resistor. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how this tiny switch works and then let's get you ready to start incorporating push buttons into your project. So let me get some clean paper here and we will dive right into this topic. So let's understand how the switch works and I'll just start and draw two pictures and the first picture is The switch that is just sitting here when it's not being pushed it's just sitting here on its own it looks like this and then also similarly on this side the same thing is happening it's symmetrical about both sides but if the switch is just sitting between this lead and this lead it is an open circuit okay and so this would correspond to let's call it the up position of the button. And if we have an up position of the button, you can imagine we are also going to have a down position and this would correspond to you are holding the button down. And so this is, we'll call it the down position where you are actually pushing the button. And in that case, you will have this. So in that case, between these two leads, you have a short. So this, you have a short. The two are connected. And in this case, the two leads are open. You can have a short or you can have an open. Now, how do you take this then and turn that into something <clears throat> on an Arduino project? Well, there is a new command that we have not done yet, but you're going to learn it's very simple, and that is a digital read. Now, you remember from those pins 2 through 13, we could do a digital write where we could put 5 volts on the pin, or we could put zeros on the pin by putting a high or a low. Okay. Well, similarly, we can use a digital read. And the way the digital read works is we pick one of those pins. We say digital read. If we are applying zero volts to that pin, we will read from it zero. If we are applying five volts to that pin and we read from it, we are going to read one. So you're going to read a zero or a one. But this is how you have to hook it up in a circuit. And th that gets to this magical concept of a pull up resistor. So we're going to start by talking about using a pull up resistor. Okay, a pull up resistor. And the way that works is over here in our switch between this top lead we are going to put our resistor 
and then we are going to go to 5 volts. Where will you get this 5 volts? You'll get this 5 volts from the 5 volt pin on the Arduino. And then this other pin will simply go directly to ground. All right. And this, in this project we are doing, we are using a 10K resistor. So let's think about this. Let's think about what happens. Remember Ohm's law, voltage is current times resistance. Well, if you look at this circuit from the 5 volts across the 10K and then down to ground, how much current will we have? Well, 5 volts, there's an open, no current will flow. Since no current will flow, there will be no voltage drop across this resistor because the voltage drop is the current times the resistance. The current is zero. There is no voltage drop. And so if I come here and I go to my read pin, my read pin would be one, a pin 2 to 12, one of those digital pins 2 to 12. We connect to it. We got to do a pin mode then. It would be like a pin mode, say pin 12, is now an input, not an output, because we're going to read from it. And then we do a reading. What's it going to see? It's going to see 5 volts. It's going to report a 1. Why does it see 5 volts? Because there is no current flowing, no voltage drop across the 10K. The read pin is going to see 5 volts, and it is going to report back a 1. Okay. Now let's come over here, and let's think about the case, same circuit but now we're going to push the button down. This still goes to ground. This is still across the, the 10K resistor. This is still connected to 5 volts, and this still goes to our read pin. Okay, but now what are we going to read here? When we push the button, this switch closes. Now current is going to flow the 5 volts is going to drop across our pull-up resistor, and therefore we're going to be seeing 0 volts, and 0 volts will report a 0. So if we put this circuit together with a 10K pull-up resistor, if the button is up, we will read a 1. If the button is down, we will read a 0. And you can even see that, right, if this was connected like this, that with the button down is connected directly to ground. It's going to read zero volts. Here it's going to read five volts. Okay, that is how a pull-up resistor works. Let me just do show you. You don't, if you use pull-up resistors, they will work for anything, but I'll just show you how the pull-down resistor works here. With a pull-down resistor, you would connect directly to five volts. And then here you put your resistor like that. And then this is like this, and this is the button. Now this is a pull down. Why do we call it pull down? Well, because now we are connecting to ground through the resistor. And then here, this would go to our read pin. So let's say when this is open, does any current flow? No, no current flows. So what is the voltage drop across your pull-down resistor? Zero. And so what is this going to read? This is going to read a zero. Now if I come over here and same setup, I'm going to push the button. And now because I push the button, this is going to be closed. This is going to 5 volts. This is going like this, okay? If I push that button, current is going to flow. The 5 volts is going to drop across here. And so when I read at this point, what am I going to see? I'm going to see the 5 volts, and this is going to report a 1. Okay, very simple. Pull up and pull down resistor. That is just showing you that if you're going to get this switch to work, you can't hook it directly to 5 volts or ground. You've got to put that resistor in there, that pull up or pull down resistor. All righty, let's get this thing back over here in view. And now we have our, uh, still need to get my breadboard. Here it is.
almost lost my breadboard in all the mess here. Okay, we'll have our breadboard and we'll get our LED and our current limiting resistor. Why an LED? Just because you need to make the circuit do something, so we'll use an LED. All right, now I guess there's one more thing that I need to draw here, and that is there's four leads coming off of this, this little switch, and so we've got to know how to plug it in. And so let me see if I can kind of draw a picture here. You can see that the leads are kind of pointing towards each other like that. You see how they're, and then like here you would have this other one like that. Okay. The thing to see is these leads that are pointing towards each other. The leads that are kind of curved towards each other like this, this is always shorted together. These two are always connected together. And similarly, this one and this one are always connected together. Your switching action happens between these two. The switching happens between those two. So what I want to do is I want to connect it where this would go to the resistor and this would go to ground because this is where the switching is occurring between and so that means is I need to connect it like that all right and if for some reason this doesn't work put it in the other way if you can't see what I'm talking about all right now what do I need I need from this pin right here, I need to go through my pull-up resistor, but this is kind of the problem. Do you see if I zoom in, the switch only leaves me one connecting hole because it's kind of filled up the rest of them. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put in a very small jumper cable where I come from that over to a nice clean column. Okay, so you see how I've just moved over to a new column. Now I have room to make my connections. And so now I need to get my 10K pull-up resistor. And I'm going to need to go from there over to another column. And then remember this end the top end of the pull-up resistor needs to come over here to 5 volts, to 5 volts on the Arduino. And I've got a nice little 5 volt pin. I hook it in. And so let's look at what we have done here. We have gone from 5 volts across 10K and we have connected it to that switch. So now it's connected to the switch, the bottom leg of the resistor, or in my case, the right leg of the resistor is connected to the switch. What else do I need to do? I need to read off of that connection. I need to read, I need to tap off of that bottom leg of the resistor, and I'm gonna come over to pin 12, on the Arduino. So pin 12 is going to read off the bottom of that resistor. Now what is the final thing I need to do? I need to ground the other side of the switch. Okay, right? The bottom side of the switch, the bottom connection on the switch needs to be grounded. And right, I took this point up to pin 12. So the bottom side here of the switch needs to come over to GND. So now I have that. And let's just see, let's go ahead, uh, let's go ahead and put the resistor in. Let's finish building our circuit. I mean, put the LED in. Okay, so we're going to start now with the 330 ohm current limiting resistor. I'll go between column 25 and 30. 
and then the long leg of the LED connects to the right leg of the current limiting resistor. And then I need to come in from column 25 and I will go to digital pin 8. And so that's what's going to make this thing work. And then I need to go from the bottom leg or the short leg of the LED, I need to go over to ground. And now I am just going to, I'm, I'm going to say, okay, that is good. So now I have a switch and I have an LED. So at this point, what we need to do is <clears throat> we need to come over to our Arduino code. And so let me see what would be the suitable view here. What will be the suitable view? Perhaps uh, this one. All right, perhaps this one. So let's start writing our code. And I'm going to get further. Ah, I'm going to get further out of your way here. So maybe you can kind of see our circuit as we're going along as well. So let's start coding. All right. Let's think about some of the variables that I need. Well, I've got an LED. Uh, I, I'm going to have an integer for my LED pin. And that was pin 8. The LED is hooked to pin 8, so that looks good. Now, I am also going to have a button pin. And that was connected to pin 12. All right, and then I'm going to have a read, uh, let's call it button read. So that's what I'm going to read from the button. And since I'm going to read it, I don't give it a value. I just declare it. Let's turn on in our Boyd setup. Let's turn on our serial monitor, serial.begin, the old trusty 9600. Then let's come down and do our pin modes, pin mode. <clears throat> LED pin is a what? It's an output. I'm going to be sending a signal to it. Now pin mode, uh, button pin, what is that going to be? I'm reading from it. It is going to be a what? It's going to be an input. Yes, indeed, it is going to be an input. So I've done my pin modes. I've declared my variables. I have turned on my serial monitor. So what do we want to do in the loop? The first thing we want to do in the loop is just read the value from the button. And so what do we read that into? We read it into the, the variable button read. And what is button read equal to? Well, digital read. Ah, the happy little orange color. That's good. It recognizes digital read. What button are we going to read from? Or what pin are we going to read from? We are going to read from button pin. And that's the only parameter with a digital read. It's just where you're reading from. Now let's just do the simplest thing possible. Let's do a serial dot print ln. And then let's print button read, what we just read, and then close that. And I like to put a delay in there. And so let me come up here and make a new variable so that I will be doing things well. Int, and I'll just call it dt for delay time. And I will say that's equal to 100, or let me make it 250 just so it's a little easier to read. Right, that's just trying to slow it down so that it doesn't run by so quickly that we can't see it. All right, so then I am going to put in a delay of dt delay time milliseconds. All right, this looks pretty good. I'm going to try to download it. So as I download it, I do indeed need you to hold your breath to hope that this works. Everyone, hold your breath. Oh, darn it. Someone did not hold their breath. Who was it that did not hold their breath? Okay, where on earth did we go wrong? Exit status one error compiling board, and it's not telling me anything about that. DT was set up, void setup looks good, void loop looks good. Uh, button read. Does anybody out there see what I did wrong? Let's make sure that we've got a connection. 
Okay, we are connected to uh, we are connected to the Arduino on COM three. Uh, this is quite perplexing. It really looks so good to me. Ah, uh, oh, okay. Were you guys yelling at me over this? Look at that button pin needed a what comma. That was part of the problem, but the real problem is you were not holding your breath. So I need everyone to hold their breath this time, okay? <sighs> boom. Okay, boom. And look at this. It's printing one, 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 one. Why is it printing a one? Tell me why is it printing a one? Because is the button pushed? No, the button is not pushed. And when the button is not pushed, it should read a 1 because it is seeing the 5 volts. When I push the button, what should I see? It'll connect that read pin, pin 12, directly to ground, and it should read a 0. All right, so let's press the button. Boom, 0, 1, 0, 1, boom. All right, man, we have a push button that is working. So the Arduino now knows, is the button up or is the button down? Now what do we want to do? Well, we want to do something, right? We want to do something on the project. What can we say here? If, can you guys see this right? If, what would we say? Button read, equal, equal, remember double equal on a conditional. If button read is equal to 1, that means, what does that mean? That means that the button is not pushed. And so what do we want to do? A digital write to what? LED pin. And what do we want it to be? Low. All right. So if you're not pressing the button, you want the LED to be off. And you guys know by now how much I hate that Arduino adds the close curly on there because then I end up putting an extra one. What's the other case if button read equal equals zero? What does that mean? That means the button has been pushed. And then what do we, and again, it added the closing curly. So this is the start of the if conditional. This is the end of the if conditional or the clause. Okay, so what do we want to do if we press the button? Well, button read will be zero if we press it, and then we want to do a digital write, and then we'll do LED pin, and we want to put it what? High. So what's that saying? If the button's pushed, turn the LED on. If the button is not pushed, turn the LED off. And so let me download this. Hold your breath. Ah, yes, okay. Let's go over here, and now I'm going to come over. Do you see the 1111, one, 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 meaning the button is not pushed? I'm going to push the button in 3, 2, 1 now. And the LED came on. Boom! Look at that. On, off. On, off. Okay, it's a tad bit sluggish. It is a tad bit sluggish, so I'm going to take this down to 100, so it's a little snappier. I will download that, right? That delay in there is putting a little bit of a delay in the uh, in the responsiveness, okay? So that looked good. Let's press the button. Boom, on, off, on, off. All right, you guys have incorporated a push button into your project and made it actually do something. And you learned how to do pull up, and pull down resistors. Okay, what would be the next thing that we're going to do? And this sounds like it would be really easy, but really you got to think about it a little bit. And in fact, I was going to do it in this lesson, but I just saw, let's just learn about pull up and pull down resistors in the switch. And now let's think about making a toggle switch. And so you can go away and try to do this, and then I will do it in the next lesson. But what you want to do is like, if I press the button, I want it to come on and stay on. And then if I press the button again, I want it to come off and stay off. Off, okay, and so that would be a toggle switch. And that will be your next lesson, which will be lesson number 28.
Okay, guys, I hope you felt, uh, followed along with this. I kind of like this project and would love to hear your comments down below. Really, I like hearing from you guys. Let me know that people are actually watching these lessons and I'm not just sitting here talking to myself. Think about subscribing to the channel. If you do, make sure you ring the bell. You've got to hit that little bell in order to get notifications. And then also think about sharing this with other people. Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.